China is something else that you've been very vocal about recently. You and this this gang of nefarious Texas hedge fund managers who are trying to take down the People's Bank of China. Um, and again, it's another, in, in, in my reckoning, very well argued case for the devaluation of, of the yuan. And, mm. and you know, Hugh Hendry was on talking around, said it'll never happen. The world's over if it happens. And I, I can see where he's coming from. But it seems to me that the, the people that debate on the they won't devalue side are assuming it's going to be a voluntary devaluation, something that they choose to do it's rather a, than they have point. to do. Perfect point. Because that, that seems to me they're going to have to do it to recap the banks. There's going to be a reason for them to do it, not a choice. Well, it's going to happen to them. Yeah, Again, exactly. Uh, even, even, in your, even, even in your soliloquy there, you say they're going to have to do it. Yeah. Um, they're going to have to allow it to happen. It's going to happen, right? Um, I love Hugh. We've had a number of debates um, throughout history, and he's, he is a, he's a fantastic, fantastic individual and, and a br brilliant mind. Um, but if, if the reason that it's not going to happen is because it can't happen because the rest of the world's going to have so much trouble with it, um, that doesn't give me, uh, any, uh, that doesn't give me any, any solace whatsoever. In fact, you, you look back to the U S financial crisis when, um, I would go meet with various heads of investment banks or, um, or investors. And I would say, this is what's going to happen. And this is why, and this is how the structures are structured. And, you know, someone would look at me and say, well, that means Fannie and Freddie would be out of business. Right. And so therefore, the government will never let that happen. I heard that argument in 2006. Yeah. I heard it many times. Can't happen. Because the consequences would be so dire that something can't happen. And when I look at what's happening now in China, the amplitude of what's, what's happening is two, three, four times what it was in the U.S. The people running the Chinese regulatory and oversight uh, for their system have only been doing this for less than 20 years. Uh, and they've really never endured a full crisis. I guess back in the Asian financial crisis um, in 98, 99, and the Chinese banking recap of 01, um, that still cost them 30% of GDP, mm -hmm. right? This one's going to cost them about 30% of GDP. Loss given defaults, we think, will be more than 80%. Uh, percent. They're going to lose $3 trillion of bank capital. There are so many perfect parallels to it doesn't matter whether it's the U.S. mortgage credit system or whether it's the European banking system or the Chinese banking system. There's a fascinating series of events that are, that are happening that it's clear as day how it's going to gum up and it's beginning to stop. And so, um, you know, one has to develop their own opinion as to how it's going to happen and how that will metastasize or begin to really play things out. And um, we see it starting now. Xi Jinping doesn't make every decision as to which SOE gets paid and which one doesn't. It does, he doesn't make any decision as to which SOE pays its bills and which um, investor is going to be paid 100 cents on the dollar or 80 cents on the dollar or 20 cents on the dollar for a restructured bond. Um, they're all, the 31 provinces all have their own economic uh, decisions to make and those are driven by the top, but there's no one central decision maker and we're seeing that play out in the defaults that we've seen to date. And I think the world seems to think that they flip a switch and everything's gonna work that way. And what's interesting is the politics of the system tells you it doesn't work that way. They're gonna expand the PBOC's balance sheet. They're going to slash the reserve requirement. They're gonna drop the deposit rate to zero. They're gonna do everything the US did in our crisis. They're gonna, there is a playbook. There's a template for them. Yeah. They have to do what they have to do. Every single thing the Chinese central bank and central planners have to do is currency negative for them. It's the world's second largest economy, so you better be focused on it because in the next two years, this is happening. And if you wanna pretend that it's not gonna happen, you're gonna do poorly somewhere in your portfolio and your life. Uh, but if you accept the fact that it's gonna happen, you should just be thoughtful about how to structure your, your portfolio around that. But the law of unintended consequences is really big right now. There is no world after the tomorrow where China devalues by 20%. There is no world. I start from the presumption that the consensus is wrong. My best advice is that you can't bring your ego into this. The 21st century is going to be the century of China, whether we like it or not. 80% of all the crowdfunding platforms in the world are funded by hedge funds. 
because that produces a return.